Desert, there's no water. There's no water in the desert. So what happens? The deer is thinking there is some water in the desert. Just like, you know, in the horizon sometimes we see some waves because of the sun rays in the horizon. So in the same way. The deer is running far away in the desert trying to get water. But there's no water. In the end, the deer is so tired and he dies in the desert with hung hunger and thirst under the sun rays. So in the same way, in the same way, we are in the material world. This material world is like a desert. This material world is like a desert. This world is like a desert. We are hoping to get happiness, but you'll never get happiness. It's like searching for water for a wise oasis in the desert. And the Bhagavatam explains. Whatever we do, we think we'll get the happiness, but we actually never get happiness. Shukadeva Goswami Pada says, Hey Maharaj Parakit, Jeevas in this world. They are doing karma activities to try to find happiness, but they never time. In the end, they only get unhappiness. So you can see Mahaprabhu, how he was, he saw how the jivas they are uh, under the delusion of Maya, and Mahaprabhu is running behind them to try to deliver them. And he's raising his two arms, running behind the jivas. And Mahaprabhu is saying, Hey Jiva, which is like a deer, once at least, look at me. I am here for you. And chant. So this wealth is, which is even rare for great demigods. Mahaprabhu had so much opulence, he had all this happiness in the family life, he gave up all this to deliver the living entities. His wife was just like Lakshmi, Vishnu Priya, and Mahaprabhu also gave up his wife. He gave up also his old parents. He gave up all this beauty of his wife and everything. So much wealth also. Mahaprabhu had so much money also. High family birth. Like he was born in a high family. His wife was just like Lakshmi. And he gave up all this name, fame, and reputation, all this knowledge, this glory, like this fame. He gave up all this just to deliver the living entities. Mahaprabhu took sannyas. So in this verse explains the Akta Swadu Raja Lakshmi. Means be, to, to fulfill the, vow, the words of a Brahmana, Mahaprabhu took sannyas. So in the Acharyas explain. Some people explain this verse according, uh, meaning it relates to Ramachandra, but our Acharyas explain that no, this loka refers to Mahaprabhu. This loka refers to Mahaprabhu. This loka refers to Mahaprabhu. This loka refers to Mahaprabhu in the Bhagavatam. So. So, some people say that this loka refers to Rama, like, because Ramachandra, because actually, like saying that our Ramachandra gave up Sita, and but actually this is meaning for Vishnu Priya Devi, this shloka. So, Shastra explains that Mahaprabhu, he, he took sannyas and that day he went to the house of Shridhar. So he went to Shridhar and he took some lau, some vegetable, and gave to his mother. Mother, please make dud look look like white pumpkin, sweet rice of white pumpkin. And also mocha, also banana flowers. Mahaprabhu loved Dud Lok Loki 
and mocha ghar, banana flower sabji, with, and also dud loki loki, like a sweet rice made of some pumpkin. So, Mahaprabhu had gotten married, and Mahaprabhu was not never never joking with. So Vishnu Priya. So generally after marriage, Mahaprabhu was not speaking to Vishnu Priya, but today he was speaking so much with her and saying, "Oh, please decorate me and do so many things." He was giving so much attention to her. So Vishnu Priya thought, since we got married, Mahaprabhu is not even talking to me or anything, but today he is talking so much to me. Shasta explains. You know, like for example, a fire, before the fire extinguished, the fire will be so much bright, you know, so much color, and so much uh, more, uh, bigger than normal, and then it will extinguish, you know. So in the same way, Mahaprabhu gave so much attention to Vishnu Priya Devi, and she was even thinking, it's strange, because gen he generally does not give so much attention to me like this. So she saw some, uh, inauspicious signs, like she hit her feet in a stone and her toe was bleeding, and also she went to take bath in the Ganga. And what happened? That the nose ring, that like a sign of her marriage, also she lost in the water. So, so she was thinking, oh, something will happen today, surely. And then, Mahaprabhu was Vishnu Priya in the room, and he was thinking, today I must take sannyas. Today I must take sannyas. So. Mahaprabhu indicated to the devotees, I must take sannyas. And the devotees, they are trying to pacify Mahaprabhu, but Mahaprabhu said, no, I will I will go away from Navadip and I'll never come back. But Navadip is the highest place. Navadip is no different from Vrindavan. Like Krishna doesn't give one step out of Vrindavan. Krishna doesn't give one, never goes away from Vrindavan. So in the same way, Navadipas Chandra Gaurasundara, he actually also never leaves Navadipa. He's always here also in Navadipa, only eternal. So just like Krishna has two manifestations, one in Mathura and another, another in Dwarka. But the original Krishna is always in Vrindavan with Haladini Shakti Swarupini Shamati Radhika doing various pastimes. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is also always in Navadipadam. Mahaprabhu never leaves Navadipadam. And he has two manifestations. Like once, one he took sannyasa in Jagannathapuri and went to Jagannathapuri and another manifestation is also he met Raya Ramananda and he was delivering other living entities. Our Shastra explains. So Bishabhanandini Shumati Radhika, she also has two manifestations. One is Samjogini and another Vyogini, Radha, also called Kama and Vama. So in this way also Chitana Mahaprabhu absorbed in the mood of Shumati Radhika. He was making all these pastimes. Chitana Mahaprabhu. He was leaving his house and going to take sannyas. And Vishnu Priya saw some signs that he was going to leave. She was thinking, she was fearing this. So Mahaprabhu had decorated Mahaprabhu. And they were, he was sleeping on the bed. But Mahaprabhu was thinking, I must give up the Vishnu Priya and go away. So Vishnu Priya Devi, she was serving the lotus feet of Mahaprabhu. And she caught hold of his feet so tightly so that he would not go away. Vishnu Priya was whole night holding the feet of Mahaprabhu. But Mahaprabhu thought, uh, how can I go? Then Mahaprabhu remembered Jogamaya, you know, because Lila, Jogamaya always helps in the Lilas of Bhagavan. So remembering Jogamaya, Jogamaya came in the eyes of Vishnu Priya Devi, giving so much sleepiness in, in her eyes, so much sleepiness. Vishnu Priya Devi could not resist the sleepiness and 
she slept there in the feet of Mahaprabhu. Then Mahaprabhu slowly, slowly. He was coming out from the hands of Vishnu Priya Devi. And he also remembered, oh, I cannot take sannyasa without the permission of my mother. So Jogamai also arranged that, like uh, Shachadevi heard the sound of a cuckoo bird. And she told something, you know, some Vaishnava is saying, hey, cuckoo bird of Vraja, go, go to Braj. So in this way, indirectly, Mahaprabhu took the permission of his mother to take sannyas. Then after that, Mahaprabhu, what did he do? He came to this Ganga Ghat, this place here in the Ganges. He did prayers to Ganges, Devi Suresh, Bhagavata Gange. So in this way, he did so many stuff to the praise to Ganges. He did the worship to the Ganges. Then he gave up all the attachments. And Mahaprabhu, he jumped in the Ganges. So Nirdai means you can give up anything in the world, but to give up your own mother, this is so like so bad thing. But Mahaprabhu was cruel, he was hard-hearted. He just left everything and he crossed the Ganges and went to Katwa. Before the name of Katwa was Kantank Nagari, was the name of Katwa. That place, Mahaprabhu went there and then he took sannyas from Keshav Bharati. So many descriptions are there. Later, early in the mor morning, Vishnu Priya Devi, she woke up and she saw that the bed was empty. Goranga was not there. Then Chachi Devi thought, Shachimata was crying so much. Listening to the cry of Shachimata, all the Navadipavasis came there. And then Mahaprabhu took sannyasa and he wanted to go to Vrindavana. But Nityananda Prabhu was specifying. And he told to some cowherd boys, oh, if some man comes here, some sannyasi comes, golden complexions, and if they, he asks you how far is Vrindavan, you tell him that he took the wrong path. And you show the opposite path, show that the opposite, the path of Vrindavan is the other one. So, Nityananda also told to Advaita Charya, oh, quickly uh, prepare some boat and so, to cross Ganga and to come to Sh Shantipur and prepare some, bring some sannyas cloth for Mahaprabhu. Then Advaita Chara prepared this. Then Mahaprabhu was trying to go to Vrindavan. But he met these coward boys who had been trained by Nityananda Prabhu. And Mahaprabhu saw them and embraced these coward boys. And Mahaprabhu was absorbed in Vrindavana moods and speaking many shlokas. Then he asked, Oh, how far is Vrindavan? Then all these boys who had been trained by Mahaprabhu, by Nityananda, these cowherd boys had been trained by Nityananda, they showed the wrong direction to Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu chanting her names, he came back to, Nav to Shantipur. Nityananda was there. Mahaprabhu asked, Nitai, you also came to Vrindavan? Then Nityananda told, Oh Prabhu, wherever you are is Vrindavan. And Advaita Chari. Advaita Chari also came to Vrindavan. Then Advaita Chari told, Prabhu, wherever you are, that place is Vrindavan. Then Mahaprabhu saw so many, you know, like jackfruit trees, coconut trees. Mahaprabhu said, Well, maybe I'm, I'm confused. This place is not Vrindavan, this kind of trees. So this is Shantipur. No, Mahaprabhu, but we didn't lie. Because this river is also, Jamuna is also here next to Ganga. So then they explained to Mahaprabhu, give me two minutes to speak, to finish speaking. So Mahaprabhu, what did he do? He saw the Ganges and he jumped in the Ganges. 
the intendant took him out of the water and put him, gave him some cloth and took him for out of, took him up in the boat again. So Nityananda called all the uh, Navadipavasis and all the Navadipavasis they came to Shantipur to see Mahaprabhu. Even Shachimata also came. But only one person didn't come. Who? Vishnu Priya. Why? Because Shasta explains that the sannyas should never see a woman, like especially his ex-wife. So Mahaprabhu mercifully he gave his wooden sandals to, Mahap- to Vishnu Priya Devi. Mahaprabhu sent his wooden sandals to Vishnu Priya. Vishnu Priya she was chanting like this. Those who worship Mahaprabhu, they are my life and soul. Sing, worship Goranga. Sing Goranga's name. Take Goranga's name. So in this verse, this poem explains what Vishnu Priya was singing. So this place is called Nirdoya Ghat. Shankaracharya also, he, he was coming here to preach the Mayavad philosophy. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to Shankaracharya and told, Hey Shankara Shiva, you are my, my dear devotee. You can preach, yes, please preach this Mayavad philosophy everywhere. But don't preach this in Navadipadam because Navadip is such a dear place to me. Don't preach my Vada philosophy in my dear Dham Navadipa. So in this way, uh, Shankaracharya, when we were taking bath, the devotee asked me, why do we speak about the four Sampradayas here generally? Why? Because Shas explains that if we have this Maya Vada philosophy in our heart, until we have this philosophy of Mayavadism in our heart, Shuddha Bhakti will never be able to enter your heart. In Chitana Charitamta it's clearly explained also. If you have the Mayavadi philosophy in your heart, your heart will be hard as like a thunderbolt. thunderbolt. If your heart is contaminated by the philosophy of Mayavad, your heart will be very hard, just like a thunderbolt. And Bhagavad Bhakti cannot appear in your heart. And so in this way, generally we speak about the philosophy of the four sampradayas here because the Shakara Sampradaya is not a Sampradaya which is bona fide in the scriptures only four are bona fide Shri, Brahma, Rudra and Sanak Sampradaya if, if you take the mantra in these four Sampradayas you will attain the perfection in the mantras but if you get a mantra in other Sampradayas you can never get the perfection of the mantra so the main Acharya of Shri Sampradaya is Lakshmi Devi now in this Kali Yuga was Ramana Acharya, the Madhu Sampradaya main Acharya, original Acharya was Brahma and in Kali Yuga was Madha Acharya and the main Sampradaya, original Acharya of Rutra Sampradaya was Shiva Ji himself and in Kali Yuga was Vishnu Soma. The main Acharya of Sanak Sampradaya and the four Kumaras and in Kali Yuga is Nibadita the Acharya. So in this way Mahaprabhu he honored all the Sampradayas but he accepted the Brahma Sampradaya. Sometimes also there were some things wrong in the Brahma Sampradaya that had to be defeated but still the speciality of the Brahma Sampradaya that is very special and that's why Mahaprabhu accepted the Brahma Sampradaya there are two things like two things why Mahaprabhu accepted the Brahma Sampradaya two kinds of vision Mahaprabhu established the Achinta Beda Beda Tata Siddhanta. So Mahaprabhu honors the Bhashtu Parinambad 
the Deoda Charas established, but Mahaprabhu specially established the Shakti Parinam Vad. And then Mahaprabhu established the Achinta Veda Veda Tato Siddhanta. Gurudeva, he wrote a beautiful book about this. It's a book about the four sampradayas. It's in Hindi, English, I think. Bengali also. You can find this book. We must know about the four sampradayas. Why? Because Mahaprabhu is God himself, but he never created a fifth sampradaya. He didn't create a fifth sampradaya. No. So, but he accepted the Madha Sampradaya. Why? Because there are two things in the Madha Sampradaya. First is that the Madha, Madha Chari always speak about Dvaita Bhedvad, dualism, dualism. Like he spoke about five differences. Difference between God and inert, inert and inert, God and soul, soul and soul, etc. Punch bed. And also another point is that he also indicated the Gopi Bu, Gopi Bhav. In the Madha Sampradaya, there was a bit also of Gopi Bhav. So, it's a very beautiful place. We come here, we must know the conception of our Sampradayas. The Shasta explains, you should not be lazy to enter the Tata Siddhanta. If you enter Tata Siddhanta, then your heart, mind will be fixed in Krishna. If you don't enter Tata Siddhanta, actually, you cannot enter your bhajan, spiritual life. Siddhanta is like the basis of your spiritual life. And the Rasa, Madhurya, is just like a big castle, palace you built on it. If the bases are good, strong, then the palace can be, can remain. Otherwise, it, if any small earthquake or shaking the earth, then your palace will collapse. So, if you, in the base on, on the base of Siddhanta, you can one day relish rasa, rasa Madhuri. So the Vaishnavas will speak even more. I just speak some introduction, just a little bit, but the Vaishnavas will speak even more.